So one, the plan for today is we're going to be looking at some Katie Montgomery comics. I've already done this twice, three times actually, before. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to be continuing with that because it's quite an easy thing to do. We're just going to jump into it. There aren't so many people, so uh, the you know people watching this on YouTube, uh, be prepared for the fact that Twitch chat will be uh, less active than it was last time. But if you want to be part of the change, then... Uh, you know, check out my Twitch. Although, like I say, this Twitch, the whole thing with it is it was completely just, I was like, oh, goodness, you know, I, I was really busy Saturday, really busy some previous days, and therefore I didn't have time. So here we have a uh, graph chart, I guess, comparing TRAs to gender critical people, to MRAs, to religious extremists, to I don't know. Again, I, I avoid saying the word because I'm sure YouTube sends out people to um, look for, you know, if they detect anyone saying the word, I feel like it just brings bad attention. So the people in charge of Germany in the 1930s, I don't think having it as an actual image will be an issue. Uh, so, and they're being compared on, these are things they're being compared on, ban trans women from women's spaces, bans trans, ban trans healthcare for kids, get rid of hate crime laws, keep conversion therapy, and then ban abortion. Uh, and obviously, yeah, this is supposed to be something. The thing is, you'll notice th this is kind of dumb. Well, yeah, sure, you can list a small number. I mean, a small, like, a handful of areas where you're likely to agree with anyone. But obviously, if you disagree with them overall, it doesn't really matter. And you'll notice that two of these specific things here are relating to trans identity and it's like yeah sure i'm already aware that there are some peculiar allies when it comes to trans identity so what the things i mean you could do this for all sorts of other stuff like the the flat earth people could make a thing where it's like flat earthers and then it's all of these other people or you know any other group of people who they hate and it'll be like believe the earth is flat and then obviously or, or let's say maybe the opposite so uh, believe the earth is a globe and it's like oh wow look all of these people who who believe the Earth is a globe, they're all the same. Uh, so as it comes to, you know, the trans identity thing is just irrelevant. It's like, well, obviously that's our opinion, but it's an opinion just based on objective fact and logic and, you know, biological reality. So whoever we might agree with on this issue, whatever. But here's the thing. You'll notice it's not even accurate because obviously gender critical people uh, would want to uh, oppose the idea of trans women in women's spaces and also um obviously transing children but mras well not necessarily i mean there are plenty of mras who are perfectly willing to affirm trans stuff there's nothing about mras that would contradict them affirming trans stuff so whatever uh then you have religious extremists and this is even more not true because there are many religions which specifically allow for the validity of trans identity. Uh, Islam tends to affirm trans identity, and of course that's why Iran has such a high uh, rate of people transitioning. Uh, but there's also, I think, in many Hindu, or you know, I say, Hindu, you know, different denominations of Hinduism and things like that, because obviously it's a very big religion, uh, there are plenty of people who would be considered extremists, but they affirm various kind of forms of trans identity. So this idea that uh, if you're a religious extremist, you're automatically against trans identity or like, and you know, the kind of broader, uh, you know, kind of proliferation of trans activism isn't necessarily true. And yeah, so I guess then you just have this one specific group, these people who were in charge of Germany in the 1930s. And I think they were probably against, I mean, it's worth noting at the time, of course, that this whole thing of like being trans didn't really mean the same thing. And many of kind of the earliest trans identity theorists at that time were people like working on cures for homosexuality and stuff like that so yeah this wasn't uh you know the kind of postmodern judith butler style uh trans identity stuff we have nowadays next you have uh the column get rid of hate crime laws now here's the thing again you will notice that do gender critical feminists want to get rid of all hate crime laws no I've never met a gender critical feminist who thinks we shouldn't have any hate crime laws. So what I do think is there are gender critical feminists who think some hate crime laws go too far, which is a very different thing. And you can be, for example, a liberal 
and think that hate crime laws go too far in some cases. You can be a progressive. And I mean, one of the obvious examples is I've never met anybody. I'm sure there must be people out there, but anybody who thinks that the Count Dank Dankula pug thing, when he obviously made his pug, uh, you know, like at like one of the people in charge of Germany in the 1930s, you know, as like a joke, uh, you know, he did the whole pug thing. And I've pretty much everybody I've spoken to, whether they are liberal, progressive, whether they think that, you know, they're kind of free speech absolutists or people who think that actually, yeah, there are some things which are, you know, should be considered unacceptable. Everybody I know personally or have uh, interacted with has said, oh, that went too far. Like that was ridiculous because it was obviously just a stupid joke. Uh, why would you, you know, treat that as a hate crime? So that's an example of how pretty much everybody, I think, thinks at least in some case that there are some hate crime laws or some instances of hate crime laws being enforced that goes too far. So if you're going to conflate thinking that some hate crime laws are going too far, which is, of course, what gender critical feminists think when people are being arrested for calling biological males um, he and him and his, uh, when uh, people are being arrested for that, they're saying, well, these hate crime laws are going too far. But you can't conflate that with the idea of wanting to get rid of hate crime laws. And yeah, like I say, I mean, the funny thing is that you could say in some sense, I mean, religious extremists, many religious extremists would support um, laws against blasphemy, which are kind of just a different spin on hate crime laws, right? Because it's like, uh, you know, I know lots of uh, Muslims, for example, will say, well, you shouldn't be allowed to insult other people's religion. That's hateful. To insult anybody's religion is hateful. So they're, what they're presenting there is actually blasphemy laws to say you shouldn't be allowed to blaspheme against somebody's religion. But they're presenting it as like hate crime legislation. You shouldn't be allowed to hate other people's religions. Uh, so yeah, the, the whole, I mean, obviously, spoiler alert for this entire chart, it's just taking these very kind of ambiguous policy positions and conflating them across actually all of these different uh, categories, which are also quite ambiguous, conflating all these things and being like, oh, look, they're the same, which is, of course, stupid. Then you get keep conversion therapy. Now, there are a few issues with this. The first thing being that conversion therapy is really not very much of a thing at all in the UK anyway. But the other thing is that most gender critical feminists I know think that, yes, we should not have conversion therapy when it comes to uh, people being uh, gay. The people in charge of Germany in the 1930s uh, also wanted to, well, they wanted to get rid of conversion therapy, I guess, because like I say, uh, the lots of the trans identity stuff going on in, and, you know, kind of gender theory going on in Germany at that time was actually about curing gay people, converting, and when the, um, you know, people in charge of Germany burnt all of that trans research that you hear about, uh, a lot of that was actually stuff written by people who were looking for cures for homosexuality. Uh, of course, religious extremists, do they want to keep conversion therapy? Well, again, in Iran, for example, uh, trans identity is used to, uh, you know, basically trans away the gay. And of course, that's something we're seeing in the UK now too, and in America as well, where gay people and lesbians are being uh, trans. So actually the TRAs, therefore, by that logic, also want to keep conversion therapy. You know, if we look at the religious extremists and their kind of keeping of conversion therapy, we can see that reflected exactly in trans identity. So can keep conversion therapy. I mean, ultimately, the key point here is that what gender critical feminists are rightly critical of is that if you then say that uh, anybody who ever kind of wants to talk through in a therapeutic capacity somebody's decision to identify as trans uh, and somebody's kind of trans identity, then if that has any possibility of actually talking somebody out of identifying as trans, that might be considered conversion therapy. And that is the concern. And yeah, I will put my flag on the ground right now and say, yes, I think that we should never even entertain the idea of having a trans conversion therapy ban because what that would ultimately do is, yeah, make it so that you can't talk through these issues with people in a therapeutic capacity uh, if that presents the risk of actually convincing them that, yeah, you shouldn't completely deny biological reality. Uh, so yeah, and then you get, finally, ban abortion, which uh, this is just like a pointless 
uh, thing because actually it's just showing how uh, gender critical feminists aren't, uh, you know, in league with any of these bad people. So, and you know, obviously I could talk through how this is also an oversimplification, like every single uh, big red X and big green arrow here represents an extreme oversimplification, just as every single column and row represents some kind of oversimplification. But uh, obviously it's all pointless because this isn't even, you know, this is actually showing how gender critical feminists and I guess you could say the TRAs, um, insofar as the TRAs are quite well represented on the progressive left, uh, tend to, yes, agree on this point on women's rights. The funny thing is, I would imagine that, I mean, recently I've seen plenty of people act as if actually gender critical feminists do secretly support banning abortion. So that's interesting. Uh, you know, sometimes they will be reasonable, but other times they uh, will be completely unreasonable in their suspicions about what gender critical people actually believe. But yeah, when you break it down, then you actually have four categories which are supposed to be showing how the gender critical feminists align with these other kind of right wing objectionable groups, of which two of them are just specifically about trans identity. And of the other two, it's being inaccurate. And then finally, you get this uh, fifth category where it's like, oh, actually, it turns out that there are also some significant areas where they don't agree. So it's like, I guess, ultimately, the conclusion there, and I know this was a, a long comic to start with. And that's because uh, it was quite, it's quite a dense comic. Don't worry, it's going to get a bit quicker, I think, as we go on to the other comics. But ultimately, at the end of all of that, I kind of have to say, uh, what was the point in any of that? And if you look here, it says, you know, it's interesting to see who the real kind of, you know, bad guys are actually agreeing with. Um, and the point is, well, sure, might they agree on that? So, yeah, like there's going to be loads of areas where we might agree on stuff. But so what? I mean, I was literally thinking recently about the fact that communists and uh, those people who were in charge of Germany in the 1930s, there's a huge number of things that they would agree on. That like a massive number. I don't, I can't, you know, and you probably know that there are a huge number of areas. You can like make a massive list of just like different columns where it's like, agree on this, 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 this. But so what? they still disagree on some significant stuff and that's what makes the difference. And it's kind of the exact same thing here. You know, I think you could have even added more stuff if you want to kind of oversimplify. I'm sure you could have said, well, there's other stuff where they might agree too. But even if you could, so what? There's still many significant areas where we disagree, where radical feminists and, you know, uh, <laughs> those other groups disagree. So what's the point? Uh, all right. So this says, I don't want anything to do with you lot, but we hate trans people too. Arg, this is such a moral dilemma. Maybe I'll just be friends with them a little. So this is again a gender critical person befriending a uh, you know again uh, a probably somebody who is not actually was not actually in charge of Germany in nineteen thirties and forties, but sympathetic to them. And apparently uh, they're saying, oh, but we don't like trans people either. And then they're saying, oh, this is such a moral dilemma. Maybe I'll just be friends with them a little. Now, the thing is, uh, it, it, it's not really true. So it says, maybe I'll just be friends with them a little. Obviously, that's not true. Nobody's friends with them. Uh, the closest I can say, so I'm going to be very char charitable, far more charitable than this deserves, and uh, present what I think would be the closest to what I've seen, which is you take something like Boris Johnson's Conservative Party. Boris Johnson's Conservative Party is nothing close to this. And I'm sorry, you know, uh, kind of, what's the word, like, uh, I guess, over-the-top people, exaggerated people, uh, but hysterical people, you know, it, it's not close to this. Boris Johnson's Labour Party is incompetent, oh, sorry, Boris Johnson's Conservative Party, I don't know if I misspoke previously, um, is incompetent and rubbish and awful and uh, certainly evil and deceptive and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I don't really understand how anyone can think they're doing a good job or anything like that. But uh, there's certainly nothing close to, like I say, these people here. Uh, now, I did see some people say, oh, it's a moral dilemma because I hate the conservatives, but at least they know who a woman is. I saw people saying that. Now, it's worth noting the majority of people I saw saying that 
were saying things like, oh, I, I could almost bring myself to vote for the Conservatives. I, I could maybe just about consider voting for the Conservatives. Most of them were actually saying that they were going to spoil their ballot, you know, rather than that they would actually even consider voting for the Conservatives. So it's not really friends, is it? It's more like, it's not, oh, I could be friends with them a little bit. It's like, no, I could maybe consider possibly supporting them, but actually, realistically, I'm probably just going to spoil my ballot because even though I agree with them on this one thing and I appreciate I agree with them on this one thing, I actually disagree with them on so much else that I don't even want to vote for them. Now, again, I will point out that's talking about the mainstream British Conservative Party, the party that, for example, legalized gay marriage. Uh, you know, like, so this is not anything like the kind of radical right wing conservative beliefs you'd be likely to see from these far right extremist reactionaries. What uh, friendship do gender critical feminists have with far right extremist reactionaries? None that I've seen, not even any kind of alliance, which again would not be accurately characterized as friendship, but, you know, not, yeah, not even getting along. I, I'm not even aware of any evidence of this. Um, and then it says, maybe I'll just sanitize what they're saying for a larger audience. Uh, that's like the little kind of comment on the side. And again, I've not seen anything like this. So this would definitely require some evidence. Because like I say, the closest this gets to anything I've observed is massively far away from what this is kind of depicting. So what would your dream world look like? No gender stereotypes, free access to healthcare, no discrimination, legal protections. Okay, so it's worth noting that's what gender critical people uh, think too, from what I've seen. No gender stereotypes. I mean, that's by definition. If you're gender critical, you have to be against gender stereotypes. Free access to healthcare. Most gender critical people I know are left wing. So they would say, yeah, you should not have to pay for healthcare. Uh, no discrimination, of course. Uh, you know, I mean, it's worth noting, for example, discrimination can mean, for example, you can talk about somebody having discriminating tastes. So obviously, uh, sometimes you should discriminate. You should discriminate between truth and fiction between good and evil. You should, you know, that's why obviously sometimes people talk about like, if you do something indiscriminately, a lot of the time that's actually a bad thing. You know, like, oh, you're just doing this indiscriminately. And it's like, oh, that's actually bad because you're not considering the different factors involved. So obviously uh, in that sense, uh, you know, that's not a thing. But assuming this is saying discrimination in the sense we would understand it of illegitimate, unjustified discrimination, obviously we'd be against that. Uh, and then it says legal protections, which is such an ambiguous like thing. I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, but then you get the gender critical person saying trans people simply wouldn't exist, so they wouldn't be a problem. Now, the thing is, yes, but that's not, it's kind of pointless. Again, it's like you're asking one person who basically doesn't really believe anything substantial, what their ideal world would be. And they're just listing a whole load of stuff. And then you're asking somebody who has like a very specific belief that is, you know, kind of defining them as gender critical. And they're saying, well, yeah, as a gender critical person, this is my specific belief. Um, it, it's weird. It's like asking, it's like if I, for example, had, I don't know, on one side, uh, a, a Christian, for example. And on the other side, I had somebody who hates the Star Wars sequel trilogy. And I said, so what would your dream world look like? And obviously maybe the Christian would say, oh, you know, everyone would be treated equally and they'd love each other. And, you know, the poor would be taken care of and uh, people wouldn't take revenge on each other. You know, everyone would just turn the other cheek and all that kind of stuff. And you go, oh, that looks lovely. And then you get to the Star Wars sequel person. They'd be like, oh, the Star Wars sequels wouldn't exist. And it's like, well, I guess in some sense that's accurate in that what defines somebody as a sequel trilogy hater would be not wanting the sequel trilogy to exist. You know, like... Th that's what defines them, but that doesn't mean that's the number one issue for them. That doesn't mean that is what their dream world would look like in any meaningful sense. And obviously, yeah, for me, if you asked me as a gender critical person, what would my dream world look like? Well, yeah, sure. Part of that would be that you wouldn't have trans identified. I mean, first of all, it's worth noting that actually it's not a dream world. It's the world we live in. There's no such thing as a trans person because you can't transition from being a man to a woman. But yeah, there wouldn't be nobody who even entertains this delusion that you can uh, be trans you know like that they, they wouldn't even have that delusion and that would be my ideal world uh the same way i guess yeah if you ask an atheist what would their ideal world be like they might say oh people wouldn't believe in god but the point is does that mean it's the entirety of everything i hope for in the world 
Does that mean that it would be the entirety of everything an atheist hopes for in the world, that they want nobody to believe in God? No, that's ridiculous. Of course, if you just ask me as a person what would my ideal world look like, I mean, how long have you got? I'd have all sorts of things I'd want to list, from, you know, maybe the kind of most minor things to the things which I think really seriously matter. But yeah, the reality is that it, it's just, like I say, I mean, the main issue is that it's focusing on the fact this person is specifically gender critical and then saying, oh, so your dream world would just be about these specific gender critical things. That's the main issue. The other issue, of course, is that actually, uh, if this person is gender critical, then they would also have to say no gender stereotypes, because that's also true. You should also probably think as gender critical people are generally defined with reference to their support for women's rights. You would have to include a whole thing about women having equal rights. So actually, yeah, it's just a completely inaccurate uh you know, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, completely inaccurate uh, comic or cartoon or whatever. So next we get, I think that trans people are a cult and that's why I've stopped my son from talking to his friends, going on the internet and playing with his toys. We've also taken him out of school so that we can teach him the truth about biology. This doesn't make any sense because of course, yes, if you're, if somebody you know is getting involved in a cult, then you would want to control who they're speaking to and interacting to and what information they're looking at to stop them getting involved in the cult. This is literally like a very dumb kind of just like no you thing uh, where it's like, well, how my question would be, how do you think that you should stop people getting involved in cults? Like if I found out somebody was getting involved in like, I don't know, uh, well, whatever, I'll just say any hypothetical cult. I'd be like, oh, actually, you know what? You need to stop speaking to these people who are, you know, peddling this cult, cult like nonsense. You need to uh, stop going on the internet. To I, I, by the way, I will say I have no idea what it means by playing with his toys. I guess it's probably because toys are like pushing trans identity stuff, which okay, I can kind of see. Um, but yeah, and also if you believe that, I mean, you know what's the kind of hilarious? So I'm thinking about the Simpsons episode, The Joy of Sect, where they kind of move to a cult. They, they they end up living in a cult place and Marge tries to get the entire family out of the cult and they end up kidnapping Homer and I think also Bart and Lisa as well uh, and, you know, taking them to a safe house where they try to deprogram them. And I guess like Katie must just be watching that episode like, wow, I can't believe Marge is such a cult leader controlling who her family can speak to. And it's like, yeah, it doesn't count once it doesn't count if it's to go directly against a cult. If you're fighting against a cult, then of course you're going to be uh, restricting what people can do in order to stop them getting involved in that cult. That's the only effective way to counteract a cult. So it's a, a very kind of dumb comment. Uh, next you get, you'll never be a woman. You'll always be a man to me. I'm a trans man. Well, in that case, you're a woman. I mean, essentially what this is pointing out, see, it says, I want what you don't want, but that's not true. Because if this person said, I'm a biological female and therefore a woman, they would say, yes, I agree. So it's not, I want what you don't want, because if you admit to the truth and you say that you want the truth, well, that's fine. What it actually is, is I want the truth. So if I assume that you are a biological male for whatever reason, uh, then obviously I'm going to say you're a biological male, therefore you're a man. If you then reveal that you are a trans man, which would, you know, a so-called trans man, which would mean that you're actually a trans-identified female, which would mean you're biologically female, then I'll say, okay, so in that case, the truth is you are a uh, woman. Like, so that's it. It's basically just saying, well, if you reveal new information, then obviously, and, and that new information sheds light on a kind of additional truth to the matter, then obviously I'm going to respond to that. Pretty simple. Next you get, the science shows that healthcare X is the best in this case. My belief system says healthcare X is bad. Then you can't work for our healthcare organization. This is discrimination. Um, so yeah, kind of. I mean, like at the end of the day, if a, I mean, it's kind of weird because again, the science shows, it's a bit like, uh, ultimately you can say, well, what is the, what does the best evidence we have lead us to as far as conclusion is concerned? And by the way, it's possible that sometimes the uh, best evidence we have might lead to... So let's say, for example, that somebody says, well, right now, the science leads us to the conclusion that uh, 
for example, well, I mean, let's say, for example, creationism is wrong. That that's one you know, young earth creationism is wrong, which you know, of course, it does. Uh, does that mean that if somebody's a young earth creationist, they literally should not be allowed to work for a scientific organization? I think I think that would be ridiculous to say. Like at the end of the day, if somebody is still going to engage with the science, because I I think here's the important distinction to bear in mind. There's a distinction between saying the science is wrong versus saying, well, that might be what the science says, but I still don't believe it because science can be wrong. That's a really important distinction to bear in mind. And yeah, if somebody's saying, well, you know what? If I'm working for your healthcare organization and your healthcare organization is operating on the principle that this particular healthcare is the best, well, obviously I have to obey what the organization says. Although I would say, by the way, if you're gender critical, you shouldn't want to work for an organization like that. But if that's what you say, fine, I'll work with you. But I'm also allowed to believe that that's wrong, that actually sometimes the science can be wrong. And regardless of what the science says, uh, I think that in this case, it's going to be revealed that it's wrong. And yes, if you then say, well, if you think that our science can possibly be wrong, you're not allowed to work for this organization. Yeah, that would be discrimination. Science shouldn't demand complete obedience. It shouldn't be like, you have to believe everything we say or else you'll get kicked out. No, that should not be how science works. Next we get Microsoft Word. Trans rights were invented by three Jewish billionaires. Gosh, no, I can't write that. MS Word. Trans rights were invented by three billionaires. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Because, well, are you high? Because yes, if you randomly point out that they're Jewish, that is perhaps anti-Semitic. It's like if I said, I, don't, I mean, I don't know, like, it, it, if I bring up that somebody is black in any situation, you could rightfully say, hey, why, why did you bring up that they're black? And if I bring it up in like a derogatory situation, like, um, you know, well, I don't know, I'm not going to give examples, but you can imagine a situation like, obviously, there is a massive difference between bringing up that somebody is Jewish and not bringing up that somebody is Jewish. Because, uh, you know, in one situation, you're saying, hey, it was invented by three billionaires. There you go. That's just the information. But if you say it was invented by three Jewish billionaires, that's obviously worse. So... I don't see why, like, it literally is better. Like, that's the thing. It's literally better. It's like if I said, Obama is totally incompetent and he was just, just a rubbish president, for example, uh, then, okay, that's fine. If I say Obama was a totally incompetent rubbish president and he was black, <laughs> that sounds much worse, you know? If I say Obama is useless... Okay, that's fine. I mean, I think he was pretty useless, and I think the um, the fact that his legacy has been now quite substantially entirely eroded uh, speaks to that. But if I said Obama is a useless, and then, you know, a useless black man, or in some way made specific reference to his race, yeah, that would be worse, because you'd think, hold a minute, why, why did you bring up that he was black? What are you saying there? And yeah, it's the exact same way. If I say, I mean, for literally, it's like, I would say that most billionaires are greedy, right? So if I picked, let's say I was talking about any billionaire, it doesn't matter, whatever billionaire, and I said, oh, they're a greedy billionaire. Okay, that's fine. But let's say for, if, for example, I decided to specifically bring up the fact that, you know, I thought, you know, you know what, I need to make sure everyone knows they're Jewish too. This person's a greedy billionaire Jew. Can you see how actually one of those statements is objectively fine? I'm just saying this person's a billionaire and they're greedy because let's be honest, all billionaires are greedy. Versus specifically mentioning they're Jewish as if that like is in some way uh you know uh, incriminating them uh next you get are you a man or a woman no and of course yeah this is just a non-binary person expressing their completely nonsense belief the reality is that they are uh, one or the other so yeah not not particularly it's not really a point it's just a funny funny little joke uh oh, this is slightly cropping the text but whatever uh, oh, there we go. You know what? The chat, somebody wrote in the chat again. So the chat, you've been relegated, sorry, you've been promoted to being visible again. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, somebody's saying, who who does that? And yeah, that's kind of the thing. Like, I feel like there was a thing where in one of the books, it might have been Trans by Helen Joyce. It mentions like the history of trans identity. And it mentions that there were 
three billionaires who were influential in pushing it, and those three billionaires happened to be Jewish. Now, I'm not anti-Semitic, so for me, the fact that those billionaires were Jewish is not something worthy of note. I would not feel the need to bring that up, because so what? It's irrelevant. But TRAs, they think it really matters those billionaires were Jewish. Apparently, they really think you need to know the billionaires were Jewish, and they're angry that gender critical people don't think that's relevant. Which is funny, because, you know, obviously one of the things that the um, uh, kind of 4chan poll people will say a lot is like, name the Jew. That'd be like, and that's why they do the whole, that's kind of where the whole echo thing started, where you like do the triple parentheses. Because um, like, you got to name the Jew. And like their point there was like, oh, the Jews are in control, so we need to name the Jew. And it's interesting that, of course, actually, if you're a normal person, you'd say, well, look, if it just so happens that a Jewish person is in charge of this operation, so what? You know, we don't need to point out that they're Jewish. But the, like I say, 4chan poll people would be like, no, you've got to name the Jew. And apparently that's exactly what the TRAs think too. They're like, you've got to name the Jew. You've got to make sure everyone knows. Uh, you know, apparently if, if we don't mention that, uh, that the billionaires who started the gender critical movement were Jewish, apparently that's really... Uh, not okay. Uh, and I'm just like, well, I would think that's what we should be doing. Anyway, so I'll read this. Um, Trans people are trying to tell you, you have to be attracted to people with breasts and a vagina. I don't care if you've got breasts and a vagina, the only men attracted to you are gay. The reality is that first of all, it's not a vagina. Again, very reductive and misogynistic to act as if uh, the only thing that makes something a vagina is, well, it, it's just, there's no way to turn a penis into a vagina, uh, I can report. Uh, but basically, ultimately, I mean, I, I can okay, so I kind of get what this is saying. It's saying, well, um, it, it's making the point, <laughs> I guess, that if you are a, uh, that usually women would have breasts and vaginas. And indeed, in the case of vaginas, I think that's pretty much always true. But so let's just focus on breasts. Usually women would have breasts. And therefore, you would not expect gay men or straight women to be attracted to the idea of somebody with breasts. But really, what we're talking about here is actually just being biologically female. If you are a straight woman or a gay man, you would not be attracted to a biological female. So the point here is, well, okay, you've got breasts, but so what? You're still not biologically female. Uh, like, that's the simple point. And yeah, a lot of these like uh, Katie Montgomery comics are basically just exercises in stating a belief that is completely internally consistent and just like, I guess, like exaggerating the fact that sometimes people will use simplifying language. So often people will say, yeah, that like if you're a gay man, you're not going to be attracted to somebody with breasts. Um, but obviously, and I, OK, I kind of also see, I guess, where this is going. I guess it's implying that therefore... Uh, if if gay men aren't attracted to people with breasts, then surely if a biological male has breasts, then who who's attracted to them? Straight men or gay men? And I guess the answer is, well, actually, I think you'd expect the average person to be uncomfortable with somebody who has uh, kind of entirely changed their body to accommodate a delusion. So in that sense, I guess the answer would be nobody really. Um, but, you know, ultimately, I mean, my take has always been that actually, in reality, sexuality is complicated. And that's why I wouldn't ever make like massively reductive statements like that. But yeah, ultimately, I guess what this cartoon is doing is taking the complexity of uh, sexuality and the fact that some people will occasionally, as they have a right to, use somewhat simplistic language, you know, say, lesbians are always attracted to vaginas or whatever else, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, just whatever simplistic language and then be like, oh, well, look, doesn't that create an inconsistency? It's like, well, sure, I guess if you're going to use simplistic language to describe something that is, you know, in some ways often quite complicated, yeah, I guess you're going to have that issue. But so what? That doesn't, it doesn't meaningfully establish anything in terms of like uh, trans identities being valid. Ugh, don't you hate it when men call you sweetheart? Yuck, yeah, like, smile more, sweetheart. OMG, that ugly s okay. sex doll transgendered just told that woman to smile more. What a misogynist. Okay, so basically, this is, like, supposed to be a joke about, ha, look, uh, they're taking things out of context. 
but I, I've not seen this at all. Um, but yeah, basically it's so, in other words, it's like, oh, a trans person just innocently giving an example of misogyny to establish what misogyny is. And then a gender critical person thinks it's an example of a trans person being misogynistic. Now, I personally, I'm not aware of that ever having happened. Obviously, if it did happen, that would be taking things out of context. Um, but I mean, it's also worth noting, having said that, I, I feel like I can imagine at some points, trans identified individuals have engaged in misogynistic language in a way where they'll be like, they'll have like plausible deniability to be like, well, I was just giving it an, as, as an example, but actually you get the impression, oh, I think there's something more going on here. You know, I don't think this is just, uh, you know, you giving it as an example. I think it's you actually enjoying being able to say misogynistic things. And I could imagine that has happened before. And I can imagine that in that case, Katie Montgomery would be absolutely convinced, oh, no, they were just giving it as an, as an example. But yeah, gender critical people would actually maybe look at the kind of attitude of the person who said it, maybe when it comes to other things like women fighting for their rights and say, actually, you know what, it seems like this person is is uh, was not just innocently giving an example of uh, sexism, they were actively being sexist. So that's a possibility. Uh, next we'll have, all I did was say sex is real. Sir, you were driving three times the speed limit and you ran over a dog. So yeah, here you go. Like, apparently, I guess this is supposed to be saying like, oh, like it's an exaggeration, obviously, uh, that tr uh, gender critical people think that it's just about saying sex is real. Like that's the only thing you'll get in trouble when actually it's often things far more extreme than that. And, you know, obviously in some sense, I guess that's true. Because, yeah, I don't think you will be arrested literally just for saying sex is real. But at the same time, it's nothing as extreme as driving three times the speed limit and running over a dog. Um, you know, it can be. I'm pretty sure you can get arrested for calling a biological male by male pronouns. Not consistently, but I think it can happen. And essentially all you're doing there is saying that biological sex is real um, in, you know, I mean, obviously with the implication that therefore it's what we should be understanding as a relevant factor when talking about whether somebody's a man or woman. So, you know, it's not as simple as just saying sex is real, but it might as well be, which I think is kind of the point. Um, ultimately, if sex is real is going to mean anything at all, then it will lead to you making other statements, and those other statements are what can get you in trouble with the police. Next. Trans women are men because the dictionary says women are adult human females. Yeah, if anybody uses the dictionary and says, well, the dictionary says this, therefore it's true, they're an idiot and they're setting themselves up for this response. The dictionary says trans women are female. Just because the dictionary says something doesn't make it true. Yeah, I, yeah, there we go. If a gender critical person has made that argument, they are very silly. And like, I've, I, I've, I've encountered this thing before of like people being like, you, oh, that was a weird noise for me. Uh, I've encountered this thing before of people being like, um, you say that uh, trans women aren't women just because the dictionary says so, but the dictionary actually says they are. And it's like, I've never said before that trans women aren't women just because the dictionary says so. Uh, if you think the dictionary is like the absolute authority on how words should be used, you're wrong, uh, quite simply. So don't say that. <sighs> um, trying to throw a whisper into a bin and failing, or maybe there's a... For some, something's wrong. I don't even know what's supposed to be wrong here. Uh, a chocolate bar is next to a bin. And they're saying, this is trans people's fault. It's literally just like the classic joke of like, oh, they'll blame trans people for anything. When actually what they blame trans people for is literally, and again, it's not really, it's more about the ideology rather than the people. So yeah, suffice it to say that I think that uh, gender critical people only blame trans identity and trans ideology for precisely the full extent of everything that trans identity is responsible for. I've never seen a gender critical person like blame anything, j just like anything that's just like casual, like it, it just like a random thing be blamed on trans identity. Uh, oh, Harry Potter's trending. Love that. Uh, here we go. I want thousands of children to suffer and die. You monster. Yeah, you monster. I want to change the law so th that thousands of children suffer and die. You monster. Why don't you respect people's political views? You're the real monster. Again, um, this is like acting as if like the gender critical point of view is like, oh, I just, you know, don't care. Whereas actually it's like, well, actually I want to change the law so that in the long term, 
children are far better off, far healthier and happier mentally, because this whole idea of trans identity is completely shown to be nonsense. Because the reality is that trans identity as a concept, even after a uh, you know, medical transition, still leads to people having higher instances of mental health issues. So actually, the most idealistic goal is to imagine that we can make it so this entire idea of trans identity would just not be taken seriously at all. And the best way to work towards that is, uh, yes, to stand against uh, normalizing trans identity through allowing people to, you know, have surgery for it or to be, you know, have their trans identity respected or whatever. I don't think we should treat LGBT people with dignity and respect. Then you aren't welcome here. How dare you not treat me with dignity and respect? I'm sorry, you're welcome after all. Um, that's, I, I don't, I don't know what the, like, I assume the final comment's just supposed to be, like, just a sarcastic, like, I, I don't know, it's all a bit weird, um, but okay, that's pretty sound, so first of all, I don't think, so, LGB, that's irrelevant to gender critical, but okay, let's just focus on T, I don't think that trans people should be treated with dignity and respect, well, again, they should be, and one of the biggest things you can do if you respect somebody as a human being is to actually interrogate their beliefs and not just immediately believe them just because they say them. That's a very disrespectful thing to do to somebody because you're basically denying them critical thinking. You know, like all ideas should be, if you just said, like, if I just said like a political belief or like a, a belief about reality, like I said, you know what, I'm actually a mushroom. And then you just said, okay, Michael, you're a mushroom. Okay. Are you treating me with respect? Or are you treating me with more respect actually if you say, what are you talking about, Michael? You should know better than this. You're not a mushroom. You're a human being. Like that's it. I'm treat when I say that you should know better than to say that you're a biological male who's a woman, I am treating you with respect. Ultimately, what it's really about is it's not about dignity and respect, it's about how dare you act as if my beliefs should make me unwelcome somewhere when they are reasonable and rational. You know, it's like this I mean, you should feel if you believe something that is correct and obviously correct, then you are more than within your rights to object if somebody says, well, you're not welcome here because you believe that. It's like, well, I'm sorry, my beliefs are actually backed up by reality and logic and biology. Next, I should have the right to call you whatever I want. Okay, you're transphobic. You shouldn't have the right to call me that. Has any gender critical person ever said somebody shouldn't have the right? Like, this is literally, this is the classic not understanding the difference between disliking somebody saying something and thinking somebody shouldn't have the right to say something. I think, every, yeah, people should have the right to call me transphobic. I don't know anyone who thinks people shouldn't have the right to call other people transphobic. The same way I should have the right to call a biological male a man. It's consistent. Um, yeah, they had to add in that you shouldn't have the right to call me that. I've never heard any gender critical person say people shouldn't have the right to call other people transphobic. Um, so yeah, just a, a lie. GC people want to take away my rights and to ruin my life. No, we don't. That's hyperbole. Um, so, again, yes, it literally is. Like, I don't want to ruin Katie's life. I don't want to take away any rights from Katie. So that's hyperbole. It's not even hyperbole. It's just literally not even... Because hyperbole is like exaggeration. This just isn't even true. Do you want to ban me from the facilities I use today? Yes, because that's not your right to use them. Uh, like, it's not a right, uh, sorry, it's not taking away someone's rights. Just because you're doing something doesn't mean it's your right. Uh, take away my legal documents saying F. Yeah, okay, that's not a right at all. And shut down my healthcare provider. Yes, because elective surgery isn't a right. So I say, well, yeah, obviously, or oh, sorry, so the gender critical person says, well, yeah, obviously. And yeah, so perfectly consistent. We're not trying to take away your rights or ruin your life. We're just trying to make it so you can't deny reality and get kind of state backing you up. Um, uh, or, you know, like institutional backing up of your denial of reality. Sex is binary and is classed by which gamete you produce. I produce sperm. I was born with ova. I have no gametes at all. So again, the point is, if you have no gametes, the question is, well, what so like yeah again you shouldn't say it's classed by what gamete you produce because what it's classed by is what is your phenotype organized around facilitating the function of you know which gamete is that because if i have testes and a penis and you know xy chromosomes and all that stuff but i don't have 
a gamete, you can still tell what gamete I would be producing if I did have gametes. And it's really that simple. Um, yeah, like we can define things with reference to functions that they can't actually perform. I was thinking recently about the fact that like you often define species with reference to their capacity for reproduction. So you say like two things are different species if they can't um, reproduce fertile offspring. And then I can imagine like a TRA coming out and being like, whoa, what about this infertile person? Clearly, they must not be a human being then. And it's like, no, because the point is, if they could reproduce based on their phenotype, we can tell that they would not be able to, you know, they would not be able to produce fertile offspring with a different species. So again, you can define things with reference to a capacity, even if they don't actually have that capacity, because you can still tell what capacity they would have. And of course, this is exactly how it works with other things in life. As I pointed out before, the entire idea within like a TRA understanding of thing, the of things, the entire idea of something being broken is incoherent. Because in their worldview, for something to be broken, it literally stops being that thing. So it's like a broken fridge just makes no sense to them because they'd be like, well, if it's not performing the function of a fridge, it's literally no longer a fridge. Whereas most people would just be like, well, it's still a fridge, it's a broken fridge. Yeah, okay, we'll go for this. Well, I don't have some myth mystical feeling of which way up I am. Why can't you just be happy with how you are? Um, but the point is, it's not a mystical feeling. They are observably, like physically upside down. So that's just complete nonsense. It's like, oh, you know, I, I don't have a mystical feeling. Yeah, you don't have a mystical feeling. You literally can observe the person is upside down. It's so simple, so obvious. Um, like, again, that's the thing, like, here, the referent for being upside down is very obvious. What is the referent for your mystical feeling of feeling a, of feeling like you're a woman? Bodily autonomy for everyone. Bodily autonomy for no one. Gender critical in the middle? Not every gender critical person is against the idea of people being allowed to choose to uh, have gender reassignment or sex reassignment, you know, which obviously is a misnomer, but whatever. Uh, like... People can have surgery and a lot of gender critical people wouldn't be against that. They would just say that doesn't make you a man or a woman, you know, based on that surgery. So this is kind of inaccurate. But then you could say, OK, well, what about people who actually do have an objection to people having um, this surgery? Uh, yeah, that particular surgery. And the answer there would be, well, it's um, it's it, contradictory to bodily autonomy because it's a choice people are making within a society where, you know, people have a lot of unhealthy ideas about gender. So it's not really against bodily autonomy when people will have all sorts of different, um, you know, like things going on caused by kind of conditioning from society that will affect things. The other thing to bear in mind is also reversibility. Like that's, that's a very obvious reason why you might distinguish because for example, uh, an abortion is reversible in the, if you have a baby inside you and then you get an abortion, that's immediately reversible because all you need to do, well, not immediately, but imminently or eminently reversible because all you need to do is get pregnant again and you're in the exact same situation. But with um, transitioning, and this is, for example, you know, because I was actually thinking to myself, like, I personally am against assisted suicide. I, I don't think we should help people to end their own life because I think ending your own life is, uh, you know, horrible thing for somebody to do. I don't think we should help with that. But, you know, you might say, well, hold on a minute, isn't that against bodily autonomy? But the point is that, you know, and I was kind of thinking to myself, like, oh yeah, is, is that a contradiction? Because I'm very pro-bodily autonomy. And I realized, well, the difference is that, um, you know, abortion is reversible. You can have an abortion and literally, as for as long as you remain fertile, you can reverse that decision. You can't reverse the decision to end your own life. And that, that's why I would say, you know what? It doesn't really matter how desperately somebody wants to do it in this moment. The, it's very likely, considering how unhealthy that inclination is mentally, and I think everyone would agree that inclination to end your own life is unhealthy. Uh, it doesn't matter, therefore, how much they want it. We know that later on, if they got through whatever kind of depressing feelings they're having in their life right now, if they got through those feelings, they would uh, reach a point where actually they were happy with their life because, of course, um, you know, these things do pass. And at that point, you know, they, if they're dead, they're dead. There's nothing that can be done to reverse that. But, you know, obviously that's why we would say, well, let's actually work on a different, you know, if somebody wants to 
commit suicide, you don't help them do it, you get them help to stop them having that desire. Because that way, you know, you're not making them do something or not allowing them to do something which is entirely irreversible. And I think it's the exact same with uh, sex reassignment, you know, ultimately, if somebody does it, well, look, you can't go back from that, you can, you know, there are people who have basically, to varying extents, caused irreparable damage to their body by doing this stuff. So that's a reason why you would take bodily autonomy um, as a little bit less relevant in that situation than you would if you were talking about abortion. Because like I say, if you have an abortion and you decide later on, oh man, that was a bad decision. Well, guess what? You know, you say, actually, you know what? I wish I would have had that baby. Good news. You can still have a baby. You don't lose anything. It's, it's uh, entirely reversible. All right. Should we do another one? Shall we do another one? Yeah, let's do another one. Whatever. I have no idea how long this is actually going to end up because you know, obviously I've been interacting with the chat a bit. I'm going to edit it down, so we'll see. Trans rights are human rights. Actually, plenty of LGBT people disagreed with trans rights. Um, so, okay, yeah, this is basically just showing that there are some LGB people who disagreed, um, but, like, overwhelmingly it's not. But the thing is, okay, this is inaccurate immediately because it's implying that, like, the only people who support trans rights are gay and trans people. Whereas here it's like, oh, no, but actually, look, it's like, but the reality is that, first of all, in the LGB alliance, there's loads of gay people. Like, I'm pretty sure straight people are a minority in the LGB alliance in terms of, like, everything going on. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, obviously I see the uh, little Easter egg in the top right corner, which I'm not really going to address. Um, but, yeah, overall, I mean, the the point being made here is that Clearly, there is a precedent for LGB people rejecting uh, trans identity. And sure, I, I don't think anyone's denying that now the majority of LGB people have been um, basically brainwashed into affirming trans identity. I don't think anyone's denying that. But so what? You know, like, that doesn't make the claim wrong. Like, that's kind of the hilarious thing here. Like, the claims being made, when you actually look at the claims, the claim from the LGB person is not wrong. Plenty of LGBT people disagree with trans rights, and did historically. And sure, you might say, well, actually, yeah, but there are loads of non, you know, there are loads of straight people who uh, agree with, or sorry, disagree with um, trans identity. And yeah, that's true, but so what? There are loads of LGB people too. And actually, if you think about like male um, gender critical YouTubers, I mean, is it not accurate to say that the top four? would probably be, and you know, you can kind of, I know people will disagree about uh, like who classifies and things like that, but I'm just talking about gender critical as it would be commonly understood, um, you know, without getting into any kind of factional stuff. I would say it would be, and you know, I'd be interested to see if anyone would disagree in the comments, me, not necessarily in any order by the way, but me, Graham Linehan, Artie, Artie Morty, Morty Artie, I always forget which way it goes, and um, Mr. Menno, right? And so that's two gay guys and two straight guys. So there you go. It's 50-50. And when it comes to uh, female gender critical people, uh, honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, I mean, there are certainly a lot more female gender critical content creators. So it'll be a bit harder for me to be like, list all these people. But I mean, obviously, Magdalene Burns was a lesbian and she's probably the biggest one. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I could go through some other people who I think are relatively big. Um, but yeah, and I mean, a lot of them, as far as I can tell, are basically being radical feminists, functionally kind of celibate. So they, they don't really, you know, and I, again, I could name people, but I don't want to, I might be kind of wrong, so I don't want to just name somebody and possibly be wrong. But the general impression I've got from a lot of gender critical people I see is they will, when they make content about radical feminism, basically be like, hey, I don't really want anything to do with biological males but they're not necessarily lesbian. So yeah, there you have an example of how that's a whole other thing going on, where these people aren't straight because, you know, that they've not got any interest in men, but they're perhaps, you know, maybe inclined towards being attracted to men, but because of their political objections, they're not. So that's a whole other thing going on. And the reality is it's just incredibly simplistic to be like, oh, look, it's all of these straight people 
and then just a handful of gay people. That's not really accurate. And certainly it's not accurate within the LGB alliance. All right, so that's the end of the video. Um, Katie Montgomery, comics aren't very good, kind of entertaining to just see some of the bad arguments. A lot of it was sort of pointless. Um, I, I don't know if we're ever going to get through, like, I've kind of been thinking to myself, oh, you know, we'll, um, we'll get right back to the beginning, the first comic ever posted, and then we'll start, and, you know, eventually we'll reach a point where we're just on top of all of them, because it is just an endless gold mine of content, and I, I do like that, uh, but yeah, obviously, I don't know, I don't want to, I've kind of been assuming that I'll be able to just make a video on them every few months or so and get through enough content that I'll be kind of catching up, but who knows, maybe that's not actually the case. Um, either way, it was good to be able to look at them this time, especially seeing as uh, I think this video you're probably going to be watching right now will be delayed because it was supposed to be up the day I'm recording and I imagine that will take a while to actually get up, so meh, but you know, whatever, as long as it's up today, that should be fine, right? Uh, oh, by the way, I'll also say that if you know, then you'll know that I upload videos on Tuesday. And I want to avoid what happened this time, where I've literally had to record the stream the same day that I'm uploading the video. So I'll probably record the video on Monday. And uh, I want to have it, you know, make the video after dinner. Because last time it got interrupted by me eating food. So maybe 7, 7 p.m. British time. If you, you know, if you're not from the UK, check that out uh that time so there we go because this this uh stream was a bit dead which is fine because obviously you know i'm just starting off and quite a few people haven't followed me yet uh, and also i don't have a consistent uh, schedule so a lot of people don't know when to check out and you know i, I will work out that schedule i just need to fiddle around a bit so i'm expecting in the kind of meantime it's just going to be people who happen to be around at the right time but eventually i'll get to a point where you will actually know when i'm streaming and that will make it much easier and yeah like i say i also had to record this significantly earlier than i would otherwise have so whatever all right um with all that said i'll just say if you're watching this now uh then thank you for watching and please do like share subscribe comment all of that let me know what you think below uh and if you'd like to go on patreon that's appreciated if you'd like to go on paypal that's also appreciated uh and i'll just say thank you to my current patrons